I put circuit breakers where the batteries go in and the solar panels connect to each charge controller. And they make a convenient way to turn the charge controller on and off. I have to close the breaker to connect it to the battery first. Let it power up, go through the display cycle once, and then I can use the other breaker to connect to the solar panels. So battery first, solar panels once it's powered up. And having the breakers here makes really convenient switches for that. And last time I said that there was a fatal flaw and that's it because from these breakers all the way back to the bus bars there is nothing if these cables were to chafe and short with each other there are no circuit breakers that would stop that the batteries could just keep feeding power into the fire and even if I got it put out the electrical energy heating stuff would reignite the fire and the other leg is the same right going from the charge controllers to the solar panels there is no circuit breaker until we get to this one here so the most general statement that I can make is that circuit breakers need to be at the source of the power. Right, I do have these three 80 amp breakers to prevent a bad battery from letting the other two discharge through it. It would stop that at 80 amps and all the cabling here is 4 gauge so it's rated for more than that. And I've already started changing this up. Right, this big, this is the most important one. This, this wire thicker than my thumb is double zero gauge and it feeds that big inverter there you can see here's more double zero and from there it's 3000 watts so at low voltage yeah you kind of need that kind of wire to carry that much current but I digress so the correct position for circuit breakers would be right here. I still have to disconnect these two. Right, here's other things. So from the bus bar, a short jumper to a circuit breaker. Well, I mean here I've got this one started, right? From the bus bar, just a short jump to the circuit breaker because none of this is protected and so there will be a plastic non-conductive cover that goes over all of this to prevent anything from shorting between these two and there will be another cover going over these the negative side and where these come in front of there the cover over these goes between the red and the black. So that's the plan anyway. So at this end, yeah, a row of circuit breakers here. And I just came back out to the boat with these circuit breakers. And on the other side 
where cables run to that spot underneath the sofa on the flybridge where there will be bus bars from the panels. There should be circuit breakers at those bus bars so that if these wires anywhere along their run were to short, they are protected and the panels don't just feed a thousand watts into the fire. Now, the panels that I have on the back of the boat. <sighs> they do have some inline circuit breakers. And I'm not entirely sure how necessary those are. The smallest ones that I could get were 10 amp, right? And these are 100 watt panels. So they're not going to make 10 amps. And if I have two of them in series, actually, I would need a 20 amp fuse. And the thing is, these wires are rated for the full current that the panel can produce, which is less than the fusing current of the fuses that I can get to put here. Right, so I could just completely short these together. And the panels would pump their maximum current through here and the wire is rated to take it and the fuse is not rated to blow. So at the moment I'm thinking the new solar panel rack will just have the cables run from the rack to the bus bars that will go under here. You may remember this spot from last time. Three strings of panels will each have a thousand watts and each feed their own bus bar. And from that coming off of that bus bar will be this four gauge wire and a circuit breaker right at the bus bar before it goes through into the cabin. And so that is the plan at the moment and that was the fatal flaw that I hadn't seen and mentioned the last time. And if anybody sees any other fatal flaws in what I'm doing, say something in the comments because he may save my boat, even save my life. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just one of these people that's so overconfident that I'll just watch a few YouTube videos, buy all this stuff, and then come in here and just start putting things together as though I know what I'm doing. So this is the next step. Is I have all these circuit breakers. I made up a couple of these cables. Man, it's turned out to be a really good deal getting the hydraulic crimper and a big spool of this cable because I just keep making more and more little jumpers like this. And every one of those is expensive if you buy it ready-made. So, man, that thing paid for itself over and over again. So, these are my breakers at the positive side bus bar. The batteries come in down here. These wires are protected by the breakers that 
are mainly to prevent two good batteries from discharging through a bad one. These are 80 amp breakers. And the cables from the batteries are 4 gauge. This is my main shutoff switch. The three positives from the battery come in here. Shut off switch. And then this bus bar becomes active when this switch is on. And the only thing connecting to this bus bar at the moment are breakers. Okay, this breaker goes to the starboard charge controller over there. This one goes to the middle of the big charge controllers. This one to the port charge controller. This goes to the little 400 watt at the moment charge controller coming from four of my existing 100 watt panels. And that's all 24 volts. And then these last two go to the inverters. This one with the thick cable, the 300 amp breaker, is the main inverter. And, and the small one is the little backup inverter. And all of these go straight from the bus bar to the breaker. And then wires leaving here I've shoved some of this packing foam in between just so that there's no possibility of a wire on its way to a breaker shorting with a wire after a different breaker and leaving a path that doesn't go through a breaker. The insulation on the wires should be enough, but this prevents chafing because it's a boat and things rock. And these here are three-dimensional. They are in front of these other wires by a bit. And these are pretty stiff. I mean, they're not going anywhere. And I've got labels on all of these, not that it matters because there's going to be a plastic piece covering this and I, there's definitely going to have to be a cutout for this switch which the old cover won't work this time but it'll have a cutout like that and I'm thinking while I'm at it, I should have a little cutout in front of each of these breakers so I can just, I can look in and see if it's open or closed. And I can maybe reach in the hole and reset a breaker without having to take the cover off. But with the breakers recessed behind the cover so they don't get hit or interfered with by anything that gets put in here as cargo. And so that's all the breakers on the 24 volt positive bus bar. Oh yeah, and these two that go to the inverters, they had been coming right through here and they'd be sitting right on top of these negative wires to the inverters. And I don't know, this just looked like a point that might chafe. And chafing through the black one and the red one could be a bad day. So the red ones get routed along my handy dandy wiring channel up here. And where they come through, I have grommets. And now this 12 volt system for the winch and the windlass. It has a battery cutoff switch but
this too should have breakers. So there is a cable coming in from the winch to lift the dinghy. A cable coming from the anchor windlass and another positive cable coming from a charge controller connected to two of the panels on the existing rack over the rear deck. And I have all the negative and positive cables coming in through this one little cutout here. And as long as I'm changing this, I'll make another cutout around the side and run the negatives through there and the positives through here separately just to keep those two apart. I'm making a cardboard template before I cut the actual panel that goes in front of the circuit breakers. And I thought I'd stop and show you a little bit about the process of way, the way I make a cardboard template. Right, this was cut approximately the size the top. I've made a mark where I'm going to cut at the top of this. And I've already started. I would try to push it over this way until something got in the way and I'd cut a notch and I'd cut another notch and finally I've got it all the way this way and I can see that this circuit breaker would be covered and I could move everything and make a new panel here but for now Everything I need covered is more than covered and leaving a notch this big so I could reach in there and operate the circuit breaker. That will work for now. And the main reason I wanted to make a template is there's a lot of circuit breakers here and I want a little cutout in front of each one sort of like this so I can reach it so I can look in see if the breaker is tripped or not and I can reset it if I need to without removing the whole panel because this is going to be buried at the back of the back cabin and the circuit breakers will be recessed behind those holes so nothing can bump into them or trip them or short them. But if I need to, I can access them. And the first cutout that I was going to make was for the main cutoff switch which will protrude through the panel just a little bit the switch itself and, and its front face will be almost flush. And so I looked about where the, the switch was going to be and I cut out a hole. And then I can see the switch itself through the hole and I can see in what direction and about how far I have missed. Right, so I don't, I'm trying not to make the hole bigger than the switch, but it already is past the edge in a couple of places and we'll fix that in a minute. It's not a big deal. So I cut this bigger hole trying not to go past the edge. And now I can really see where the edge of this is. And so I'm going to shut the camera off and make one more cut and hopefully have the cutout for this. And then there's a whole row of circuit breakers that go up here and there's another trick I'll show you for things that all fall generally in a line. But first let me finish this and then I'll get some video of that. And magically that's been cut. And I don't know, if I needed to, I could come back in and fix this by putting tape here. But I think this pretty well defines the circle. And if I recall, I think I've got a hole saw this size. So 
this will define the center and I can use the whole saw. And now there's this whole row of circuit breakers and I need to template cutouts for all of them and this is where the cardboard template is really going to show off its usefulness. So first thing is the center of this row is that far above the top of this. Let's see about a finger to that like beginning of the top knuckle. So what I can do is go about that high up, make a mark, Okay, so now my mark, one finger high above the hole, is about 10 inches. So I can go over here, measure up 10 inches, make a line across, and I'll set the camera down till I've done that. So I've marked my line, I've scored along the line, and I've also cut the panel in half because with all my moving it around in here I've realized that once I've got the refrigerator and freezer in place there's going to be no way that I can like actually take a panel off and remove it to get access to all the wiring and bus bars without pulling the refrigerator or freezer out of here or both. So with this panel split in two each half will be small enough to be maneuvered underneath the countertop and out without removing a refrigerator. So along this line that I had already determined was the from the floor to the middle of the breakers approximately. I've scored and folded and I can put this in place where it needs to be and fold this back and now I can come along and mark where all the holes need to be for the breakers. And if I was to just make measurements and try and transfer to paper and map all of this stuff out, it would take longer and there's a chance that I might make a mistake somewhere and wind up with a hole in the wrong place on the good material that I don't want to waste. So cardboard was going to be thrown away anyway and so the template is basically free. So I'm going to make my marks where I need to along here and then I'll turn the camera back on. I hope the camera picks this up but I've marked there, there, all along here basically right in front of each breaker. And now I'm gonna cut, I really haven't determined like how high up this way or how far down that way I need to go. So I'm gonna cut my holes a little undersize and work my way up just the way I did with the cutoff switch down there. So there are those holes, approximately right. I mean, a lot of these, I could actually reach in and work that breaker. I think I want this to come down a little bit lower. I've obviously missed a bit. I actually just folded this and like cut as high as, as low as I did high just cutting a U-shape out of the folded in half bit like that because it was quicker and easier. Now 
this one I may be cut a little too much off and there are these spots I think I've kind of defined the center well enough but I've got my trusty blue painters tape and I fix those with that and so that's what it looks like after that step has been done. I've also got this other half basically ready to go. So I think I'm more or less done in here with the templates. And I'm going to go out and look into cutting some actual material, or at least marking it, then cutting it. Before I put this main cover on, I need to make a separate enclosure for the ground bus. Just to prevent anything here from like coming loose, flopping down and hitting anything down here. So I've measured, I've got this piece that can go here and to attach it I've made some of these and they get screwed above and another one below and then that gets screwed to them so those are the two little spacer pieces that I made and now this cover can get screwed to those and that encloses the whole negative side of everything so even if all the bolts come out and all of those things come loose they'll just be contained behind here and don't come anywhere near the red part And there is the cover screwed on over the negative bus bar. It's all nicely enclosed. No electricity is going to escape from there and short to there. So now I can put my main cover on, which will be, be screwed to this. This is that thicker material, so I can screw the front cover into it. And I've also made another spacer like these, but deeper. And according to my calculations, I can screw that there. I don't know if it shows up very well, but this is these that other spacer. And I've set it up from the floor just the height of this so I can use this to find where I'm gonna put my screws through so these could be made more square and more uniform in size but I don't think I'm going to redo it at the moment. I got my cutoff switch. Nothing can hit the breakers. There's a separate compartment for the negative side. This is looking real good. Oh yeah, this can slide back down to there. And yeah, I can reach this breaker 
if I have to. And all of these, I can turn them, turn them on, turn them off. I can see if they're, if they've disconnected or not. And now I have to do something similar with this so that I can have these three breakers. This feeds the winch for the dinghy and the windlass for raising the anchor, all 12 volt system. So it's got two cables going out for that and one cable coming in from the one remaining charge controller on 12 volts. So here I have breakers for all the wires going to the 12 volt battery. Have the battery cutoff switch and a breaker for the charge controller coming in the winch and the windlass and there's also switches for those here and this is pretty much done I've been labeling everything so the lid lifts off like that and I have my bus bars and this cable going to the positive side of the battery loops down in there to give it some slack and then up through the lid to the shutoff switch and shut off switch and then around the outside so I have my bus bars for all these connections And then a lid to prevent anything from shorting the bus bars. I've used a file to round the edges here and back here. And I've got some foam that can go there as well.